Why actually are you postponing yourself, life? Why are you postponing yourself? Okay, I'm gonna share with you three reasons as to what could be causing this and then four really simple practices that you can do so that if you don't wanna postpone yourself and you really wanna get in the field and play with life and start doing the things that you really want to do, that you have, you can start doing this stuff. I, I want to start by saying for most of my life, I've postponed myself. I was a super shy kid growing up, a bunch of older siblings, super extroverted. I was the only introvert in the family. So I get it, not entirely, but you know, I think I understand. So in working with clients, I've been doing this for 15 years, this often comes up. So the first thing I want to share with you is probably the thing that comes up when clients are holding back or not engaging or not doing the things that they really want or just putting things off. So if it worked for me and it worked for them, I'm gonna double dare you to try what I'm gonna teach so that it can work for you too. Okay, we're gonna start with the theory. Three reasons why you postpone yourself. Number one, permission. You might need to give yourself permission to choose again, to have the new experience, to want something different for yourself because nobody is going to give you that permission. Not even people you love, but no one living or dead is going to give you the permission that you probably want or need so that you can start to engage in the ways that you want and need. So this permission thing comes up a lot with clients. I actually just last week had a pretty in-depth conversation with a client and I said, you know, who needs to grant you permission? And she was like, well, I do. And I was like, okay, go, do it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sort of being cheeky, but usually the first thing is, is it is about permission. Okay, second thing, another reason why you're postponing yourself what is postponing yourself a mechanism for? So another way I can ask it, if postponing yourself had some positive intention for you, what would that be? Because here's the thing, there's the intention and then the behavior. And so within every behavior, there is some positive intention. We just wanna, we kinda wanna know what it is. Okay, so the question is, what is postponing yourself a mechanism for? If that behavior had a positive intention, which it does, what is the behavior trying to help you achieve? Usually it's a sense of safety, love, and or belonging. A third reason why you're postponing yourself, maybe there's a sense of unworthiness. I would say if that is true for you, you just don't feel good enough to have or to be or to do, I'd say welcome to the club. I call unworthiness an emotional epidemic. It is what most people experience or suffer from. So most people not feeling that they're good enough, to have what they want. This is so real for so many people. So I call it an emotional epidemic. In just a minute, I'm actually gonna share a practice. If that is true for you, there's a sense of unworthiness, which is getting in the way of you engaging with life and getting in the field and playing. I wanna share with you a really simple practice to bolster your sense of worthiness. So in just a minute. Okay, four practices to stop postponing yourself because if you clicked on the video, there is something in you that is ready to have a different experience and to start engaging. So what would be the opposite of postponing yourself? First one, please own the experience of postponing yourself. So before we even change the beliefs or the behaviors or kind of take you out of the experience of postponing yourself, my invitation is to please own completely and fully the experience of postponing yourself. There is a reason why you're doing that. We just don't know what it is quite yet. And we want to assume that whatever the, w w there is a positive intention within that behavior. Okay, so if you're postponing yourself, please just take a moment and be like, you know what? I am absolutely postponing myself. I am doing it. I am doing a bang up job. I'm nailing it. For some reason I'm doing this and I've been doing it. I have no idea why, but this must be important. Can you feel the energy? Can you feel the energy? So I think if we can remove the judgment from, from the experience that you're having of postponing yourself, like I think if we can remove the judgment and just own what's going on, it can be a lot easier to move through whatever's going on. Again, I'm just gonna model. I'm totally postponing myself. I'm a nerd. I don't know why I'm doing this. This makes no sense. It's super frustrating. I can't stand this. I am nailing this. 
postponing yourself, I can write a book on it. I would invite you to actually stand up and give this, you can practice this and just, just go for it. I, I want you to get the energy going. I want, I want it to get out of you. So rather than shaming yourself or judging yourself or putting yourself down for doing this thing, own it, own it own it. And what you may start to notice is the relief that comes as a result of just being honest with what's going on. In how I teach, step one is either appreciation or honesty. So before we even do the change work, because I want to assume that there's nothing wrong with you. Let's assume that there's nothing wrong with you, that the behavior that's running for you is being generated by a part of you or by a belief that is actually looking out for your best interest. Practice number two, every day, ideally in the morning, because that's how you get to start the day, please start practicing saying yes. Yeah. So if postponing yourself is you're usually saying no or procrastinating or dragging your feet, just start saying yes, yep, to things that are good and true for you, good, true, and healthy. You can think of it like building a muscle, like building a bicep. Like the first time you do some rep curls, you're gonna be like, oh, that feels terrible. And then you do it some more and some more and it just kind it kind of becomes second nature. So just start, like if you're postponing yourself, just start saying, yep, someone invites you for coffee. Totally. Why wouldn't I do that? Do I want to do it? No, but I'm going to say yes. Again, you're agreeing to doing things that are good, true and healthy for you and other people. Okay. Practice number three, so that you stop postponing yourself. Once you know what the IPO is of the behavior. So let me scoot over so I can IPO means it's an acronym for intended positive outcomes. So in terms of the behavior of postponing yourself, please ask yourself, and this is kind of what I started with, why am I doing this? Why am I, why, what is the intended positive outcome of this behavior? So if postponing yourself is a mechanism for you to feel safe or to feel loved or to feel like you belong, that is extremely valuable information. And then, and then it's about identifying, okay, how else can it get there? Okay, let's just say you postponing yourself is so that you can feel safe, great. How else can you get there? Meaning how else can you feel safe in a way that you need by not postponing yourself? Okay, I hope that makes sense. I would say of the work that I do with you all, this IPO behavior, gather information as to what is the intended positive outcome of the behavior, and then how else can you work to fulfill that? I would say that's some of the higher level work that we get to do together. Okay, practice number four. So how to stop postponing yourself. If unworthiness is something that is true for you, which it is for most people, I would say you're in good company. It's totally normal. Unfortunately, it is just a part of, I think, the human system. Here's a really simple practice that you can do every day. I would actually start with this one. Please find things that you're doing right. So every day, multiple times a day, maybe you set an alarm on your phone or on your device, just to remind yourself to start taking stock please find things big and small that you're actually doing right. This is not normal for us to do this. So if there's a compromised sense of self-worth, you feel unworthy about yourself, you can think of it like, think of it like this, like a self-worth bank account and you're in the red. There's not enough money. There's not enough in there for you to use or to pull on. And so you've got to make deposits. How do you do that? Every day you start finding things that you're actually doing right and you make deposits into that bank account to bring that balance from red up to abundant, just like money. So every day find things you're doing right. Nail, like I walked across the street and I know I've offered this in another video, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's a very powerful practice. I walked across the street and I nailed it. I didn't fall, I didn't crawl, I, you know, one foot in front of the other, I totally walked across the street and I nailed it. It sounds kind of funny, but again, we're adding deposits into the self-worth bank account. Okay, a couple other things that you can do in terms of filling the self-worth bank account, start complimenting yourself out loud, inside voice, doesn't matter. It might feel awkward at first if this is not something that you're used to doing or if this is language you're not used to hearing. But again, add deposits. You're starting to add deposits into the self-worth bank account. Compliment yourself. Okay, friends, this is Ash. 
Good day, good night. Let me know in the comments which of these you find most useful. Okay, so there's the theory piece and the practice piece. I always, and this is the mindfulness teacher in me, the practice is where the rubber hits the road. That's where you're gonna start to see the changes. So I invite you to practice this, even if it's for the next week, just try it out and see what shifts for you. Okay, good day, good night. This is Ash, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, couple things. I, uh, if you're watching to the very end, thank you so much. Also, I am now scheduled to do regular master classes, so free. This is where I'm gonna take a key topic, something that you all really like from the videos, and we're gonna go much deeper. We get on a call, so you're in community, there's time for Q&A. If you take a look down below, you will find the next master class. Now, these videos live on for a very long time, so if you don't see a link to register for the live master class, you will find a link to purchase the replay. So depending on when you watch the video, but today is May. So for the next five weeks, you will, you'll have an invitation to join the masterclass. Okay, good day, good night. This is Ashley. That's a kind of dangerous microphone. I just picked it up. It's actually, I spent some time in Tuscany. I was there for two months and there was a family. Anyway, you know the cypress trees, like the classic cypress trees? Good day, good night, this is Ashley. I'll see you in the next video. Comment down below what, which of these practices are you going to take on and practice? Okay, goodbye.